Hey, we'll turn on the workstation light. My name is James and today we're going to look at the Shelly 4 Pro. Now I've had this for a while but I haven't been able to find a home for it or a place where it fits in and so I've just decided to give it a go by putting it in my shed. I'm going to connect it to an outside floodlight, I'm going to put some more lighting in my shed so I can see better and connect that up to this relay device, this Shelly, and also going to connect my soldering iron to it so I can control it remotely with Home Assistant. Now this Shelly 4 Pro has got energy monitoring built into each of the channels and it uses the same IC as what's in the Shelly 2.5. This, this Shelly device, unlike all the others, doesn't have a ESP styled Wi-Fi module. It's got a different brand and so it can't be flashed with custom firmware that would work on an ESP device. I was going to use it to connect my pool equipment up as well, except the only problem is the relays inside it are too small. They only have these relays here, which is nothing wrong with them, but for a, a, a non-resistive load like a motor, like a pool pump, it's a bit too much. The pump that I have is seven amps and the blower is 5.5 amps and it just wouldn't be, these, these relays wouldn't cut it, they're not big enough. These are rated at 10 amps at a resistive load and they can have a slightly inductive load on them but you can only put maybe half an amp or one amp, small little motors on it, any, any more than that would be too much for the contacts. A more suitable contact would be something like this and this one here is rated at 8.5 amps at AC7B rating. So that would be suitable for a blower or my pool pump. So typically they have AC ratings and there's a whole heap of different ratings for different relay contacts and different applications. So if you look up AC1, AC2, AC3, AC, it tells you what, what it's suitable for. So just to summarize, these ones which are common in many of the smart home devices that we have, AC1, resistive. These larger relays would have different AC ratings which are more suitable to motors and pumps. So that's just a little bit of advice when it comes to choosing what you're gonna control. So if you wanted to control the whole water system though, even though it may be 10 amps or 15 amps, as long as it's rated at 10 amps, this would be suitable for a resistive load like a hot water system element. Okay, let's go over and we'll check out the teardown of the Shelly and see what's inside it. And then we're gonna install some lights in, in the shed and hook this up and try it out. So I've got the Shelly Pro 4 here. And as you can see, it's got the inputs, inputs and outputs at the top here. Now it's got the neutral, the neutral input here to run it. And the, it's got four active inputs. Now you only need to use one of these active inputs because they're looped inside and it's also got the four outputs that come out from the relays and each of those outputs has its own channel of energy monitoring with the same IC as in the that's in the Shelly 2.5 and down at the bottom here we've got a neutral input and th four switches so we can use two 40 volt switches external to this device to turn on and off relays on the on the device. Now if Behind this adhesive layer, it's just a sticker, there's a, a LCD screen, there's one button just here, and that's where the inside just there, that's where the Wi-Fi module is. The only th concern I have is because this is a non-isolated device, the power supply isn't isolated, uh, it's quite easy to get through into the back of here, especially if this button were to get wear out or if the sticker sticky was to come off then inside of here would actually be at potentially a mains potential, which I think is a slight hazard, maybe. It probably would be okay most of the time. It's just something that I noticed about the way it's been designed. The, we have a look at the back here and we can see that we've got the um, inputs here that are all looped together. So you only need to use just the one of them. And we've got the four shunt resistors for the energy monitoring and we've got the power supply just here. Now if we gently prise this out, we 
you can see the back of where the Wi-Fi module goes and you can see it's got pins that just transfer the data and the control of the relays up to the Wi-Fi module that, that controls everything. And here we've got our little relays. So they're AC1 relays for resistive loads mainly. And we've got our non isolated power supply to step down from 240 volt down to 12 volt. And we've got our two energy monitoring chips and the crystals for them just there. And here is just a DC optocouple to take the input switches in, the 240 volt inputs and bring them up to the microcontroller. So that's basically the inside of the Shelly. It looks reasonably well made, I think. And um, so yeah, so just the only thing I see is just this screen, just, um, although it's not a huge problem. I think if this was made, mounted inside a load center, it would be okay, because it's not really in a place where you would access a lot and you don't have to press the button on it very often. Uh, basically, the, it just shows the state of the switches on, on the screen, whether it's on or off and how much power they're using on each channel. If you press the button, it just runs through the stats of the device, like the Wi-Fi that it's connected to and the MAC address and whatnot. So you wouldn't really need to press this button a lot anyway. Anyway, that's the Shelly 4 Pro. We're gonna go and install it now and try it out. Okay, so these are all connected now. We've got the two light buttons up and wired and everything's terminated. I've run out of conduit saddles, so I have to do that later because my van's in getting repaired. So that, that heads off to our floodlight outside. It's just a join that goes onto this light down here. 
and that was the existing line which we've moved along a little bit and then the cable goes down to our subboard down there. So we're going to test it, we're going to test the earth continuity, uh, the polarity, we've done a visual inspection, everything's okay and we'll test the impedance and we'll test the RCDs to make sure they work okay and then we'll stick our Shelly in and try it out. Well this little project's run through into the next day but we've got our Shelly 4 Pro installed just here and I've actually got some more relays that I've added to do some extra switching and so they're getting turned on and off by my little controller over here which I use for my reticulation. So I've just um, made use of some empty relays there and I'm, I'm powering them with 24 volts DC AC to turn those on and off. So now we're just going to finish off the last little bit and that's outside. We just got to hook up the switches for the pool light and the blower and the lighting for out the back. So we're just going to go do that now. Okay, so we're just out now with the pool equipment and what you see here is one of the power points that is switched from inside that runs the pool filter and that's on the pool circuit. So that's got a large relay that is going to operate that power point because it's a heavier load running the pump. We have got the light that I've just got plugged in here and the light has got a microwave sensor built into it. So we're just going to connect that to a lighting circuit and have it on all the time and the sensor will just operate it. We're going to add two more sw um, switch circuits down here, one for the pool light and one for the pool blower. So to do that we're going to use an older style, cheaper style power point which has individually wireable sockets. That means we can wire a switch to each one and one will be the pump, one, one will be the pull light and one will be the blower. When you're installing outdoor power points you pretty much always get water in them eventually so it's a good idea to drill a little hole so that it can drain, any excess water can drain out and a lot of power points actually have a little mark where it says to drill the drain hole so that's just a good little tip to do. And also make sure that you, when you fix this, especially to a metal object, that you put the caps in there to maintain double insulation. So we have, we have these all connected up now, we just need to test them to make sure they're all connected correctly and then we can power it up and try it out. Okay so this is all done now and we can see here we've got the floodlight up here so we'll turn that on and we'll turn that off and that shows the watt power that it's using and inside we've got the main lights that are all connected up and of course we've got the workbench light over here. Now if we just leave that one on and you can see the power is there for that light and it's a 40 watt light so that's pretty much spot on. And I've also got that little power point up there that's connected to that circuit so that we can, I can use it to test out transformers and LED lights at different times. And last of all down here we've got the soldering station, these four power points are connected up. So we've got that running now 
We've got our fan and our soldering iron all connected. And with that, um, that circuit, the, in the Shelly setup, I've actually got a timer set for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes after it's turned on, it'll automatically turn off. That way I don't forget my soldering iron and leave it running all night. All right, let's go check out the pool outside. So we've got our pool equipment set up as well, and this is not on the Shelly Pro. Uh, rather, it's on the uh, relay board that I made myself. So it doesn't have energy monitoring, unfortunately. But it uses the heavy-duty relays to control the pool pump, which is just down here. And we do that. This one here is the pool pump. So basically what I've done is just left my pool controller that does the chemicals and the acid and whatnot. We've just left that connected and set up on manual. So if we turn it off, if we turn it off, we see that it, it powers down the controller. And then we can actually set the timer through Home Assistant for when we want the pool to run. And then down here we've got the blower. So we'll turn that on. Which is this one just here. And the pool light. We'll turn them off now. Well, in conclusion, after using the Shelly 4 Pro, it works, it does what it's supposed to do. It's got four relays with energy monitoring built in. It installs just like any other Shelly device. It's, in, it's all the same, it's easy to use. You can use the Shelly for Hass to set it up, which is what I used. If you want to see a video about that, it's just up here. But the only thing is it doesn't really fit still in my mind. It's too inconvenient to just add into a system. It sort of doesn't, it's, it doesn't add on to something that is existing very easily. And if you were going to use a bank of relays or these Shelly Pro 4s to smart wire a house or a building or a property, then four relays in one module is not really enough. And I think that you'd also need to have provision for dimming modules as well, so that they could be used together in a bank, a lot like CBUS, Clipsal CBUS is done that way. You have all the relays and dimming modules all in a central location. And so I feel that it doesn't really properly fill that segment either. So it sort of seems to be a bit of an odd um, product from Shelly, but maybe there are some limited places where you could use it. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And if you want to see more videos about um, home automation and electrical installations, please subscribe. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Have a good day. See you later.